we stood up to Monsanto and uh, it went to trial, it ended, ended up in Supreme Court of Canada where um, everything they came after me, they lost, they lost the case, but the Supreme Court ruled that Monsanto's patent on a gene is valid, it doesn't matter how it ends up in any life form, they own and control it. And that was a startling uh, uh, decision, is that uh, even if uh, you have your crop, organic farmer or conventional farmer, and your crop is contaminated, the amount of contamination doesn't matter. They own your seeds and plants, and if you use them, you are li you're liable to a lawsuit under patent law. So that's what the case is all about, and uh, that shows how Monsanto can get control over the seed supply and food supply through cross-pollination, direct seed movement, blowing into wind or whatever. It doesn't matter how it gets there, the court's ruled. You don't own your seeds or plants anymore. So it would give them, the corporations now, total control over the seed supply, ultimately the food supply. When the U.S. began its occupation of Iraq back in 2003, one of the stated goals on the part of a lot of policy people behind the scenes was to turn Iraq into a model for the next generation of neoliberal economic policies, to impose a level of forced privatization uh, and corporate dominance over every area of life that goes far beyond anything we've seen really anywhere in the world. There were a hundred special orders that were imposed by Paul Bremer when he was the administrator of Iraq under the first stages of the occupation that were established in a way that they could not be overturned by any future Iraqi constitution. Order 81 had to do with control over seeds, and it made it illegal for Iraqi farmers to plant seeds that are not certified by some international authority. Now, Iraq is where wheat cultivation was first developed. It's really the cradle of human civilization. It's where agriculture was first developed, where people learned to cultivate seeds and till the land and improve crop varieties over time. So there are probably thousands of traditional seed varieties, particularly wheat varieties, that are unique to that part of the world that are no longer legal for Iraqi farmers to grow. We shouldn't unleash uh, this massive experiment on huge numbers of farmers and consumers throughout the world in the absence of knowing what it's going to do. If it were a matter of life and death and survival, the risk might be worth it. But it's not a matter of life and death and survival. It may be a matter of life and death and survival for Monsanto and a few other chemical companies, but for most of us it isn't. We can, grow perfect, we can eat perfectly good food without having it genetically modified. And these companies promise that uh, in Africa and other parts of the third world they'll be able to solve the problems of starvation and hunger by means of these crops. Well, if they could actually do that, rather than claim that they might be able to do it in the future, there'd be probably be less argument about it. But the fact is that uh, at the moment, this is simply a propaganda point that they make to try and justify the technology, claiming to be caring about poor people. Actually, uh, they've put almost no effort into caring about poor people. Their whole effort has been put into getting richer themselves. So um, I see no reason why we should have an experiment inflicted upon us uh, by companies whose only aim is profit um, on this massive scale. It's not worth taking any risks at all on a massive scale uh, if there's no benefit associated with them. The calculus of risk and benefit in this case comes down in favor of avoiding the risks and sticking with what we know and trust, namely regular plants produced by regular plant breeding. <laughs> Thank you.
to have a voice, people need to push their government to, to change things, so uh, one person I've just talked to uh, said that, that in the United States genetically modified food still doesn't have to be labeled. I think it's important so the consumer has a choice. Well, from the point of view of the American consumer, I think the first thing is we should be outraged that these potentially dangerous products have been slipped into our food supply without our knowledge or without our approval. And we should be asking everywhere that we buy food, either the supermarket manager or the companies that produce uh, especially processed food, if their products contain genetically engineered in ingredients, uh, if they can demonstrate to us that they're free of GMOs or not, and insist that we will only buy products from them that are demonstrably free of GMOs, or, or, if they or ask them to produce results of safety testing, which of course they can't do. I mean, we need to stick up for our rights, for a right to know, that means there's got to be labeling, for our right for products to be adequately tested before they're in our food supply, and for the right for pro to have products that haven't been tested or that have been shown to be dangerous to be out of our food supply. Basically, as consumers, we need to stick up for our rights. Um, we know that that works when European consumers 10 years ago, as soon as GMOs hit the market, said they wouldn't buy them. It only took two or three years for the, all the major supermarket chains in Europe in order to fight for customers to say, we guarantee all our products are GMO free, and then the supermarkets, in order to attract those customers then had to go to their suppliers and say we'll only buy it from you unless you can prove it's GMO free. I think, so if, if you know that, that, that there's genetically modified products in, in, in something you buy in the supermarket, just don't buy it. It's not responsible to feed the products of this infant science to millions of people or release them in the environment where they can never be recalled. When independent scientists look at the research data that supposedly presents an argument for food safety, they're appalled. They said these foods should never be approved. We need to get these foods off the market, and this will take a concerted effort. One thing that we have going for us is this. Studies show that the more people learn about genetically modified crops, the less they trust them, the less they're willing to experiment in their own bodies by eating them. So we need to get the information out to consumers about genetic modification. So even if the government won't budge, even if the government is in bed with the biotech industry, we can still topple this dangerous industry. And that is by rejecting eating genetically modified foods.